Hello, my name is Captain Kelly Muniz, Commanding Officer of Media Relations Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. This critical incident community briefing is intended to provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in Mission Division in the City of Los Angeles on January 21st, 2023 at around 3.05 a.m. You're about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case so you can have a better understanding of what occurred based on what we know right now. The LAPD conducts very thorough use of force investigations, which typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. We are still at the very early stages of this investigation, which can often take up to a year to complete, and our understanding of the incident may change as this additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies in the law until all the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution. The images and information you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Mission Division patrol officers were in the area of Canterbury Avenue and Hoyt Street conducting an investigation for a possible stolen vehicle. As the officers approached the vehicle, which was being parked, they saw three occupants seated inside and conducted a computer query of the license plate. Upon learning that the vehicle was possibly stolen, the three occupants got out of the vehicle and began to walk away. The officers got out of their police vehicle and followed the suspects on foot. As they contacted and attempted to detain the three suspects, one of them ran away. That suspect that ran was later identified as David Morales. The officers gave chase and during the foot pursuit, Morales emerged from the sidewalk and into the street. He turned toward one of the officers, raised his extended hands holding an object the officers believed to be a firearm, which resulted in an officer-involved shooting. The officers initiated an officer needs help broadcast, lost sight of Morales, and upon additional units arriving, established a perimeter in the immediate area. Here is the corresponding radio broadcast. 19X, 63, show me the silver suit. Officer needs help! Officer needs help! Officer help! All units, officer needs help. On a location, officer needs help on a location. Any air unit come in on mission frequency. Officer needs help! 1963, what's your location? Okay. 1963, repeat your location. We're going to be on Hoyt and Canterbury. Our officer needs help, Hoyt and Canterbury. Officer needs help, Hoyt and Canterbury. Any air unit coming on mission frequency? The suspect needs to be a male Hispanic. Dark clothing. We're going to be at the end of the cul de sac. Suspect is a male Hispanic, dark clothing. Officers at the end of the cul de sac. A portion of this incident was captured on the responding officer's body worn video. Body worn video cameras are used by most officers assigned to field duties. They are worn at chest level and capture a general perspective within the line of sight from that angle. The angle of the camera prohibits viewers from seeing everything the officers saw and experienced. Upon activation, both audio and video will turn on. However, body-worn video cameras have a buffer of video without audio from the previous two minutes prior to activation. This feature is designed to capture incidents that occur suddenly where an officer doesn't immediately activate the camera. Here is body-worn video from the officers involved in this incident.
Hey, watch out, watch out. Final What's that, you? You good, you good? Boy, oh, you didn't carry bag. Boy, you didn't carry bag. Where is it? Where is it? Stay here. All units, officer needs help. Poison Canterbury. Officer needs help. Poison Canterbury. Any air unit coming on mission frequency. Just stay back here. The suspects are not Hispanic. Dark clothing. Dark clothing. We're gonna be at the end of the cul-de-sac. Cul hey. You got the right, I got the left. So I know, we're staying here, we're staying here. Officers at the end of the cul de sac. L20's around. I can't have 20, Roger. You good? You good? Yeah. You're not hit? I'm good. Alright, go hot, go hot. Suspect is one of her. Suspect is one of her. Stolen vehicle. Stolen vehicle. Also ADW. Also ADW. On an officer. On an officer. On an officer. Pointing that gun at you, huh? Yeah. Suspect is wanted for a stolen vehicle on an ADW on an officer. Suspect is wanted for a stolen vehicle on an ADW on an officer. 1970, Roger. Better address is better. All right, let me put out the description. Just keep it, keep it. Responding to the help call, better address is 1463. We last see him through the through the uh, residence. Possible. Stand by. Sounds like we're through the residence. Possibly heading yeah, towards Orlita. Uh, correction, Van Nuys. Orlita High School right there? Yeah. Suspect was last seen through the residence, possibly towards Van Nuys. Two lost and stolen plates. 1990, so. officers are accounted for. Can you confirm that? And do we have an officer involved shooting? We have an officer involved shooting. Are all officers, officers are accountable. Officers are accountable. Officers are accountable. Officers are accountable. We have an officer involved shooting. All officers are accounted for. There was an officer involved shooting. Air 16 is set up a perimeter. Van Nuys and Canterbury. Van Nuys and Peachy. And we're both now. I got you. I got you. We're good. Pierce and Peachy. Pierce and Canterbury. Air 16 is requesting a perimeter of Van Nuys and Canterbury. Van Nuys and Peachy. South of Pierce and Peachy. And Pierce and Canterbury. Were there any injuries in the OIS? 16 through in the residence over here. Ma'am? He's in this area here. We don't know if he's been jumping residence or not. Alright, okay. Are you guys good? Yeah, we're we're not here, we're good. Okay. Alright, um where did you guys fire towards or where did they fire towards? I shot two rounds in this direction behind us. Okay. And my last round was straight straight ahead. Okay, and you had him last round. Last round here. Right across from the black hole. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Oh. We also have two other, other suspects who are in the vehicle. Can you guys push up forward? Yeah, we have 63 suspects description, male Hispanic, black sweater, black pants. And then he was also with two additional people in the vehicle. The description? Suspect is a male Hispanic wearing a black 
sweater, black pants, had two additional passengers in the vehicle. The two other passengers, the one's going to be a male, male. Passion, 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 dark clothing, dark clothing. The, dark clothing. the second section is a female, she's, she's got a neon, she's got a neon green, green sweatshirt. sweatshirt. Portions of this incident were captured on multiple surveillance videos from nearby security cameras. During the officer-involved shooting, the two other suspects fled the immediate area on foot. The second suspect was later identified as Kimberly Gonzalez. The third suspect was later identified as Ricardo Mercado. A short time after the perimeter was established by officers, suspect Mercado was taken into custody nearby without incident. He was arrested for resisting arrest. Notifications were made to Metropolitan Division, Special Weapons and Tactics, also known as SWAT, and K-9, who responded shortly thereafter and assisted mission officers in formulating a plan to resolve the situation. K-9 officers conducted a search of the area and located suspect Gonzalez several hours later, hiding in the backyard of a nearby residence. Gonzalez was taken into custody and was arrested for resisting arrest. She sustained bruises to both of her legs. Canine officers continued the search of the area and also located suspect Morales hiding in a backyard of another nearby residence. Morales was also taken into custody. Morales was not struck by gunfire, however. He sustained minor abrasions to both of his legs. He was arrested for attempted murder of a police officer. Here is additional body-worn video from one of the officers involved in the search. Where's the dog? Huh? Frank, Revere. 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 
Revere, up, up. Revere. Frank. Here, Revere. Frank. Here. Came a really long search. I spot across the street now. Thank God. Female. That's a female? Female. Hey! Hey! You see you over the trampoline! Hold up! Hold up, boy! Call it to the light! Your hands up! Hold up, boy! 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 Hold Who wrote his handcuffs? Turn around. Alright, walk backwards from the line. After an extensive search with K-9, no weapon was recovered. On January 24th, 2023, the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office filed the following charges against Morales. One count of brandishing a firearm at a police officer, one count of resisting an executive officer, and one count of driving a vehicle without the owner's consent. David Morales is a 32-year-old resident of Los Angeles. On January 24, 2023, the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office referred the case against Gonzalez and Mercado to the city attorney for filing consideration. Kimberly Gonzalez is a 26-year-old resident of Los Angeles. Ricardo Mercado is a 42-year-old resident of Los Angeles. In the next several months, the LAPD will continue to investigate and analyze this incident. We will continue interviewing any new witnesses that may come forward and complete any forensic tests. After the investigation is complete, our Critical Incident Review Division will forward their findings to the Chief of Police, who will make his recommendation to the Civilian Board of Police Commissioners. The board will evaluate the evidence to determine whether the officer's tactics, drawing and exhibiting a weapon, and use of deadly force in this instance met the high standards expected of all Los Angeles police officers. If you would like more information on how the LAPD investigates all serious uses of force, visit lapdonline.org, where you can also find the LAPD's use of force policy and procedures. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident community briefing.